Hi everyone. I always enjoy discussions around empowerment and leadership and this week our focus took us to the exemplary practice of enabling others to act. In our text, Kuzes and Posner lay out some fundamental principles for empowerment to happen. Trust and facilitating relationships leads to collaboration. Developing others and giving them the practical tools to success is also critical. What does it mean to build trust and what are some of the ways or techniques that leaders can do so? Sharing knowledge and information and not holding back anything is one way. And when leaders are the first to share important information to others, as opposed to withholding things, trust is developed. Fundamentally, enabling others is about relationships. Sharing meaning making, which we talked about in a previous module, and developing common goals cement relationship building. A practical way that was brought up in our text was having large projects structured in a way that promotes collaboration and input from everyone. Certainly, each individual has their roles but in the grand scheme of things, shared effort achieves much more. Given all this, what I would call relational foundation, how does this practically work? The Leadership Challenge discusses this idea of strengthening others through practical means, whether that is shared decision making or deferring credit or even responsibility. The concept of self-efficacy, taken from the psychological literature, is an important concept. When leaders foster that sense in others that they can do things themselves and feel confident in that ability, that is when self-efficacy occurs. I shared the story in some of our discussions about some of my past experiences working in the Washington State Governor's Office where I was tasked to develop and implement a capacity building program with communities, particularly communities on the margins of power. When others not only learned why it was important to be involved in their communities and were given the tools to begin and make change, a sense of empowerment and self-efficacy occurred. To use an analogy, they had found their voice and even began to replicate this empowerment in others. Adding a layer to all this discussion is the importance of organizational culture. In our readings, we explored history as a tool for leadership development, and the subtext was about how leaders ethically leverage that culture. I really like the robustness of our conversation this week about the implications of using history as a tool. And each of you have given salient points about the practice of this. One of the things I explored in my dissertation was about what organizational messages need to occur for empowerment to happen. In addition, when those messages occur is equally important. And this module reminded all of us that leadership is a human enterprise that's built on relationships. What helps in building relationships with others is knowing yourself beforehand. That's the focus next week where we'll take an introspective look at leadership. What does it mean to be self-aware and how do we recognize leadership in ourselves? That emphasis will culminate in our first paper, the Personal Leadership Development Assessment and Analysis. As a reminder, the paper does ask to use a personal leadership assessment tool and some of you have asked what tool should be used. Uh, it's left blank for a reason because I want you to find the tool you will use and discuss why you think it's an important way to assess leadership. Uh, one possible tool, and you don't have to use this one, uh, is the one from the Leadership Challenge called the Leadership Practices Inventory. There's a minimal cost to uh, this, but it's well worth it. Another one is the Personal Leadership Inventory and Assessment Tool provided by a group called Skills USA. I encourage you to do a search for a leadership assessment tool and use that. There are no parameters around what to use, only that you use and justify the tool. 
Uh, if you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask.